This is the discussion of finding probabilities if there is only one trial. Now, please recall that given a well-defined random procedure, a trial is the action of the procedure. A trial is the random action that's taking place. And we're going to discuss how to find probabilities if there was only one trial taking place. For example, if we're rolling a six-sided die, this is pretty straightforward. The probability that I roll a five is, well, we can roll a five one way, and there are six possible outcomes, so it's one out of six. And the probability of rolling a six on a six-sided die. Well, once again, there's only one six, but there are six possible outcomes, so it's, again, one out of six. The probability of rolling a five or a six is pretty straightforward. Its probability is simply the probability of rolling a five plus the probability of rolling a six. Or as you could probably just visualize, that's really two out of six, which reduces to one third. So the probability of rolling a five or a six is equal to one third. Now, the word or means either one or the other or both. Now let's talk about that or both. Well, what does that, what does that really mean? Is it, is it possible to roll a five and a six both at the same time? I don't know about you, but any time I've rolled a dice on a, on a flat surface, I've never got it to balance up on its edge, ever. And I've rolled dice hundreds of thousands of times in games and, and statistics. So it just isn't going to happen. So we have a special term for that when we have outcomes that just cannot happen at the same time. Outcomes and events are called disjoint if they cannot occur at the same time, such as rolling a five and a six. Cannot happen. And we have a real simple formula, if you need one, to calculate the probability of one event or another event happening. And it's a simple formula if the two events are disjoint. So the formula says if, if events A and B are disjoint, then the probability that one or the other will happen is simply the probability of the first one plus the probability of the second event. We simply add their probabilities together. For example, say we're rolling a six-sided die again, and I want to find the, the probability that I roll a two or else an odd number. Well, by the formula, that is simply the probability of rolling a two plus the probability of rolling a odd number because these two events are disjoint. They can't possibly happen at the same time. If I roll an odd number, it can't possibly be two. If I roll a two, it can't possibly be odd. So the probability of rolling a two, well, there's only one two on a die and there are six outcomes. The probability of rolling an odd number, well, the odd numbers are one, three, and five, so there's three of those out of six possible outcomes. So the probability of either one or the other of these happening is going to be four out of six, which reduces to two-thirds. The property, probability of rolling a two or an odd number is two out of three. All right, let's continue. Let's say I have these four playing cards. I got a king of hearts. You see these? Let me move these down a little bit. King of hearts, king of spades, queen of hearts, jack of spades. Okay? Let's do a couple easy ones. The probability of getting a jack, if I picked one of these at random, would be one out of four. The probability of getting a heart, if I picked one of these, would be two out of four, because there are two hearts, that's pretty easy. But now let me ask the question, what's the probability that if I were to just pick one card, again, we're talking about one trial, 
Given these four cards, pick one of them at random. What's the probability that I would get a king or a heart? Well, according to that formula we had, the probability of getting a king or a heart, well, the probability of getting a king, since there are two of them, is two out of four. The probability of getting a heart is two out of four, because there's two of them. Well, if I add two out of four and two out of four, that's four out of four. That's that's one. That's a 100% chance. Do I really have a 100% chance of getting a king or a heart? Well, no, because I've got this jack down here. So that formula doesn't work. Now, why in the world doesn't it work? And hopefully you see why it doesn't work. is because we have this card right here, this king of hearts, which not only is a king, it is also a heart. So when I have counted these probabilities... I have counted this king of hearts twice, once as a king and once as a heart. So to really calculate this, what I need to do is add these two together, this two-fourths plus two-fourths, but realize I've counted one of the four cards twice, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to count any card more than once. So we're going to back that out by subtracting that one card. So two-fourths plus two-fourths minus one-fourth equals three-fourths. So the probability that I pick one card and it's either a king or a heart is three out of four. And that's easily seen here because three out of four cards are either kings or hearts. But now let's come up with a formula for that. 